Okay, let's do this. Um, this is the moment of inertia of a sphere. So I have another video, I'll link it down below. What is the moment of inertia? And then I did a video for the moment of inertia due to a ring, and it's uh, I is mr squared, where m is the mass of the ring, and r is the radius of the ring. Then if you do a disk, you can find the moment of inertia of a disk by breaking it into a bunch of rings, and you get, if you, you're gonna have to integrate, you get one half mr squared, same mass, same radius. Now what about a sphere? So how do you find the moment of inertia of a sphere? And this is the moment of inertia for, uh, as it's rotated about its axis. So let's rotate it this way. Okay, so let's, again, we're gonna need to break it into things. Because the moment of inertia is the sum of the mass times the distance from the axis of rotation squared. Uh, and you could break a sphere into a bunch of, you know, infinitesimally small masses and calculate this as an integral. But then you have to do a volume integral. And I don't want to do a volume integral. I want to do a single integral. So I'm going to break a sphere, just like I broke a disk into rings, I'm going to break a sphere into disks. And I can do that. Okay, so here is my sphere. So this is the x-axis. And then here's my sphere. And that's the y-axis. And I'm rotating it. I'm rotating it about this axis, so my sphere's rotating this way. So I'm gonna break this into things that I know, and that would be a disk. So if I break this into a disk, here's my disk. Here's one of the disks. So I know the moment of inertia to this one disk is this. So then I just need to uh, break this, you know, add this into a disk right here, and then a disk right there, and so forth, and add up all these disks, the moment of inertia, the individual moments of inertia for the disks. So let's just break this in. It's a, it's a sphere of radius r and a mass m. I think that should be clear. Uh, and then this is the distance x. This disk has a radius of y. That's how tall it is from here to there. And then it has a thickness dx. So I can write the moment of inertia due to this one little piece. I can say di equals dm, which is the mass of this piece, times the radius, uh, times the, wait, what am I doing? So no, it'd be, I'm sorry. It'd be the moment of inertia of a disk. So it's one half times the radius squared, which is y squared, times dm, All right? That's the moment of inertia of just that disk which is a contribution to the total moment of inertia, one half mr squared, where r is y squared, and the mass is just dm, I don't really know that. But, you know, if I wanna integrate this, I'm adding up these over x, I'm gonna go from uh, x equals negative r to positive r, and so I need my integration variables in terms of x, I need to get these in terms of x. So let's start with this y. Um, if this is a circle, then I know x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That's the, the definition of a circle centered about the origin with the radius r. And so I can solve this for y squared. y squared equals r squared minus x squared. And then I can put that in up here and I get di equals one half r squared minus x squared dm. So I got rid of the y. Now I need to do the same thing for the dm. So here I can use the following property. I can say that the, the density, if this is uniform density, then the density of the sphere is the same as the density of the disk. So rho sphere equals rho disk. So the dense, what's the density of the sphere? What's well, gonna be mass over volume? So this is gonna be the mass m divided by the volume of the sphere. So the volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. And that's gonna be equal to the mass of the disk, which is dm, divided by the volume of the disk. So the volume of the disk is gonna be the, uh, if I draw it over here, let's just draw it as a little, here's my disk. So this is dx, this is y. So the, the uh, this is gonna be the surface area of pi y squared times dx. But I know y is this, y squared is that. So this is gonna be, uh, the volume is gonna be uh, pi times r squared minus x squared 
dx. Now I'm going to solve this for dm so I can substitute it in up there. So I'm, all I have to do is multiply both sides by this stuff on the bottom and I get dm equals, I'll write it out as fully as I can, m pi r squared minus x squared dx divided by 4 thirds pi r cubed. And the pi's cancel. So this is going to be equal to 3m r squared minus x squared dx over 4r cubed. That's dm. Now I can put that in up here and I get di equals 1 half r squared minus x squared times dm which is going to be 3m r squared minus x squared dx all of that over 4 r cubed. Let's rewrite that a little bit. Let's get all the constant stuff out front and then I have an r squared and an r squared minus x squared and another one. So I get uh, bringing the stuff out front I have 3m and on the bottom I have 8r cubed. And then I have rx minus x r squared minus x squared squared dx. And that's the moment of inertia of that cylinder right there, that disk. So now I just need to add them up, so I'm going to integrate. So let's rewrite this. So now just to integrate both sides, so I get i is the integral from x equals negative r to x equals r of this stuff. 3m over 8r cubed r squared minus x squared squared dx. I'm done with that guy. That was from my cousin Vinny. Done with that. I'm done with that guy. See? I don't know if you saw that movie. Okay, so I'm I I this is going to be uh, you know you could try to do a u substitution or something here. I'm just going to not because I don't if I said u was this r squared minus x squared I don't have a du out there. Um, I'm just going to multiply this out and then get three terms right. So let's say this is going to be equal to I'm going to bring that constant out front three m over eight r cubed and I'll leave off the limits and I get. Uh, r squared times r squared is going to be r to the fourth and then I'm going to get a minus x squared times r squared and then r squared times minus x squared so I get minus 2 uh, r squared x squared and then I get plus x to the fourth all times dx. So now you see I have something I can integrate. I have a constant x squared and an x to the fourth term. That's not so hard. So I get i equals 3m over 8r cubed. Okay, so now I'm going to integrate r to the fourth dx. Well, that's just a constant, so I get r to the fourth times x. Now I have to integrate this, and I get x cubed, this is a constant, x cubed over 3, so I get minus 2 thirds r squared x cubed. That's it. Now this one is going to be uh, plus x to the fifth over 5. All of that from negative r to r. And you'll notice here that that's an odd function, odd function, odd function. So, um, they're not going to cancel. So it's not 0. Yeah. Right. That doesn't make sense. Okay, well, let's just do the, the limits anyway. Okay, so I have 3m over 8r cubed. Now I'm going to get this r squared times r to the fourth. I'm just going to do this term first. So I get r to the fifth. And then I get minus negative r to the fifth, so it's going to be plus r to the fifth. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. I get minus 2 over 3 r to the fifth. And then minus a negative, but I put in a negative, so I get another negative. Minus 2 thirds r to the fifth. And then finally I get plus r to the fifth over five plus r to the fifth over five. So I'm minus, subtracting a negative. Okay, so now I have r to the fifth in every single term. I can, can I can bring that out. I get 3m r to the fifth over 8r 
cubed. Now I get uh, 1 plus 1, so it's going to be 2. I get negative 2 thirds minus 2 thirds is going to be minus 4 thirds. And then I get plus 2 fifths. So if I get a common denominator here, this is going to be, um, let's just write this out. Three, don't skip steps. I'm always told, don't skip steps. R to the fifth over eight. Oh, I can do that R squared over eight, right? Because I have R to the, that, that's fine. Now I'm going to get, I need to get a common denominator. So I'm going to get everything in terms of uh, uh, over 15. So I need to multiply this by 15. So I get 30 over 15. And this is going to be minus 20 over 15. And this is going to be plus 6 over 15. So this is going to be 30 minus 20 is 10, plus 6 is 16 over 15. So I get 3 eighths m r squared times 16 over 15. So now here I'm going to cancel that with that. I get 5, and I cancel this with this, and I get 2. I get 2 fifths m r squared. Boom, I did it. You can look that up on the table and you can see that it's right. And that's the moment of inertia of a sphere rotated about an axis through the center of the sphere. And I, let me go ahead and double add that this is only true for fixed axis of rotation. The end.